Hi everybody, we're back. We're here to make another video. Um, and I just want to say, I wanted to uh, put a shout out and a thanks to, I have somebody that follows my videos and she and her husband, they live out in Sarasota, Venice area. She paints along with me and she decided to come to Mount Dora to see if she could get a visit in with me and to see this place that I live. And um, her and her husband had a wonderful time. It was her birthday. Hi, Nina. Hi, John. And we had a great time. She came in and looked at all my paintings, and we talked, and we laughed. And uh, it was an awesome visit. So anybody that ever feels like coming to Mount Dora, let me know when you're coming, because I was out running errands, and I came back to meet her, and, we, and it was great. So um, anyway, today I'm going to do a landscape. And it's rather simple. And I like that because it doesn't have to be so complicated to be a good painting. And we learn so much in the simplicity of shapes and forms and values. So we're going to get started here in a minute. So come along and paint with me, watch me, and be inspired. All right, so um, I'm going to do from a photograph that I took many years ago when I went with a group of painters from the Akron, Ohio area. And we went to St. Michael's and stayed for a week and painted there. And it was just a wonderful experience. They were all such great painters. And I learned so much just hanging out with them. So we all went out on this pier and we were going, I was going to paint the boats and the water out there. And I turned around and looked behind me and I saw this house sitting in a field. And I was inspired by it and I've been painting it ever since. And yes, I paint the same thing quite a few times. I do it when I'm teaching and I like to try it. They're always different and I always learn from every one of them. So I'm just going to start drawing this house right here. Some people don't like to do buildings, but this, this one is not too complicated. Because I'm mostly buried in the um, weeds that are in front of it. And you're using your hooker screen deep to yes, sketch that's out. Right, that's right. Okay. <laughs> so that's just basic structure of the one house and there's another little house in front of it. It could be like a garage or a, I don't know, maybe it's a boathouse and you can't see the water down there. And then, of course, I spilled paint on this photograph, so I can't tell what's what. But let's just leave it about that simple. And I'm going to um, use, make shapes where this is going to be foliage or trees or a big bush. We're going to darken that in. I'm using the fat side of my number 12 Dakota Series Princeton. 6300. Right. 6300. Angled. You know, yeah, and you know, I go through these. I, every time I buy a new one, I get so excited because they're so fresh. These get old after a while. They just get kind of dried out. I know you can soak them in Murphy's oil soap. I even heard vodka. So, um, but you can you can give them some love. That helps. But I just like I get new ones every now and then. I'm going to have some of this. This is background trees. And yes, things are dripping. I don't care. This is a fun painting because it's not too demanding. And you can um, get lost in it. You can just kind of create what you want. I'm going to make, this is going to be like grasses coming up here. I'm not going to do those dark, they'll be light. Now i got to figure out my light source. I'm going to take these glasses off for a second and look at this up close. The light source is going to be coming in from this side. Is that the left? The left. Okay. So I'm going to go do, jump into my white and a little bit of Naples yellow, just to brighten it up. Look at that. Ooh. 
Yeah, nice. Right side. And then the other side is going to be in shadow. And I'm going to dip into my Brilliant Purple, Light Blue Violet, Light Blue, and maybe a little bit of Naples Yellow. And hit, I'm going to pick up some more purple. Hit this side. You know, I use a lot of paint. Uh, when I'm teaching a class and I go around helping people, I notice that they just don't use enough paint to have any fun. Use your paint. It'll give your painting that nice, juicy, free feel. Maybe there's going to be a window there. I'll just kind of suggest it. Maybe two windows here. And... You know what would be fun? And I just thought about it. Um, I might put um, an ocean back there. So this could be a house by the sea. And I know, and I know what Jane's going to say. Watch everybody. She's going to say, you just cut this painting in half. But I'm not because it's not, it's not going to, um, <laughs> it's not going to, stop it. It's not going to cover the, the whole painting. It's just going to be a little bit right back there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine. You can break rules if you really need to. So this is going to be water back here. Isn't that going to be so cool? Um, and now I'm going to take some Naples yellow. And I'm just going to start showing that this is grasses. Now, I'm not doing every, like, I'll come back when it dries and do more, so I don't worry about things because I know that I'm going to come back and paint again where this, where these brush strokes are. Picked up a little purple there that I dripped. That was supposed to be, I read, you know. Sometimes I feel those are little signs. Sometimes I pretend that there's a little painting angel standing over my shoulder. And sometimes when I have a drip or an accident or something like that, I pretend that, oh, well, I imagine that it's meant to be and to listen to that painting angel. And I would say 90% of the time it was needed. So you just have to get comfortable and enjoy yourself and enjoy the process. It's not that big of a deal. And is that still Naples yellow? Yeah, and, but it's uh, mixing picking with that hookers and all the other getting, colors. It's picking up everything and yeah. Yeah, but it's got this nice juicy feeling to it. I can go back in with my hookers and some um, cadmium yellow light or medium and start making some, you know, painting some areas of my foliage here, my bushes that are up around the house. Not all of it, some of it's gonna be like, when you go out, you know, after you paint, go out and look at trees. There are areas in the trees that are so dark because no light can go under those branches. It's black under there. So I think a big part of painting is looking and seeing and memorizing things. Now we have to decide um, well, we have to decide on a roof color, but I think I'll throw in a little sky first. And what colors are you creating there? Uh, same sky color I usually do. It's light blue and uh, white for the clouds. This is the time of year to really study clouds, especially as the summer moves on. The clouds get so big and billowy. Let's throw in a little bit of light blue violet just at the top.
I wonder if this house is still there. Just wonder. This was probably, I took this picture in 97. Before I moved to Florida. And I was just starting to paint in acrylic, coming from watercolor. I was giving myself a break from all that stress of watercolor. I'm almost got this whole thing covered, and you know what happens then. I take it outside. But now, the light's coming in from the left, so this part of the roof is going to be lighter, and that part, and that part will be darker. So let's do the light part first. I'm going and what I'm using orange, and a little cad red medium, and a little um, Naples yellow. Can't really tell much difference. I'm going to go in more Naples yellow. I'm using so much paint today. Makes it juicy. Yeah. I always tell my students, paint like you're rich. Like you have all the paint in the world. And of course I had one student respond, I am rich. <laughs> I said, well then use some paint. fun this can be. Oop, there, there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a darker value on that. So I'm going into a, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to my cadmium red medium. Maybe a little bit more brown. And the brown is the sienna, burnt yeah, sienna? Yeah, burnt sienna. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. That's Everything's a little wonky, but how fun is that? Notice how the ocean is like getting darker. It's sinking into the darkness. But when this dries, I'm going to hit everything with another layer. A little shadow under there. A little shadow here. And that's it. It's soaking, soaking wet. I'm going to take it outside and let it dry, and then we'll come back in and put some finishing touches on this. So, all right, see you in a bit. Hi, I'm back. We are back, and this is dry. We didn't have that much sun, so I put it out there for a little bit, and then I hit it with the hair dryer. So, it, you know, because it's dry, that's why I can pop all my values even stronger and correct some things. Um, I noticed that I put the shadow on the wrong side. It should be over there and things like that. So I'm going to go jump in and start repairing some of these things. The, the water in the background just kind of really soaked into my hooker's green. So I'm going to do that first so I can see it. So I'm going to go in with some phthalo green and some white. And I'm just going to look at that. Wow. Oop. And then look at that. Now, I have to, if you put a color like that, you can't isolate it. It's got to go somewhere else. So I'm just going to maybe indicate that there's some color right there. Do you don't notice? Because I have it isolated, your eye just goes right there. When I just remove it with a tiny dot like that, your eye travels throughout the painting. Just a little heads up there. I'm going to get uh, my smaller brush because that soffit thing is killing me. And that's number six, Princeton. Yeah, you got angle. Bright it's Dakota. The little, it's the little brother of the big one. Picking up that white again. And here's a shadow color. Over there going in. See, that looks better. That makes sense. Jane was looking at this and she kept seeing a kitty. Does everybody see a little kitty face right there? Well, that's going to go away. 
<laughs> um, we were laughing at that. You know, put three, you know, sometimes two windows look like eyes, and you don't want that. I have so many stories from teaching for so 20 some years, and I had a lady that she was just totally freaked out by two windows or anything that looked like eyes. Um, she was a storyteller and she was an American Indian and she just, that just did not work with her. So I always think about that. It stayed with me. Now it'll stay with some of you. <laughs> All right, and here, um, I'm just going to, like a little gutter thing there on. And you're just working all with your titanium white now? Yep. Okay. I'm just kind of going in and, and doing some, completing the painting. After it's been dry, I can just go in and do it the next layer. Now, remember I was talking about the dark in the trees? some of the really dark pockets in these shrubbery. You know, some of you are going to go along and paint with me, and then some people, they write to me and they say, you never show us how you totally finish it. Well, first of all, you finish your painting to what you want and accept and, and where you want to take it. You don't want, you know, I hope you're not following me to paint exactly like me, but to be inspired on, on how to paint in this style. But you finish it to where the exact degree that you're comfortable with. And that's how you're going to grow as a painter. You're just going to grow and create your own style. And you're going to have so much fun. And it's going to be so rewarding. And then you're going to start to look at things like, I would never pick that house or that subject. It's so simple and plain. But now you're going to look around and you're going to be able to maybe pick out some subject that is simpler than you thought you would ever accept and then want to jump in and, and tackle it. Now, are you just painting with CAD yellow and, and hooker screen? Yep. Okay. And sometimes a little bit of white. Okay. This, these are the trees behind this house. Then I'm going to go in with, yeah, the cad yellow. Just, the trees are usually lighter at the top of where the branches are sticking out. And then it's going to be dark. Lots of water, lots of paint. Um, make it easy for yourself. Make it juicy. It's a painting. Kind of doing a little negative painting into the weeds right there. And I'll be, you know, doing that over here too. I need to pop out my white and my little garage cottage down here. You know, I kind of like the foreground the way it is. I could, I could go in and in some places indicate that is that correct. cad yellow and white? Yep. Okay. No. No. It's Naples. Naples yellow. Okay. I love Naples. It's like a butterscotch. A lot of warmth. Yeah. And it covers well. And now I think I'm going to um, give another layer of paint. A Put another coat of paint on my sky, but first of all, the horizon line I think could be a little dark.
darker over here. This is phthalo green. I know they have a phthalo green blue shade. Um, I don't know what the other one is, red shade. I, I don't even pay attention to that. I just grab them. I'll figure it'll work itself out. I'm, I'm bad, I'm not that structured. <laughs> So here we go, I'm gonna... Light blue and white? Yeah, I okay. think just white right now. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm just picking up some white, because I want, I want a real sharp contrast right at the horizon line here, in value. And now I'm gonna go in with light blue. See how much coverage this big brush does? And I could get a sharp edge with it. And I think the rest I'm going to do with light blue violet. It's a beautiful color. And I need to, you know, repeat it. I've got it repeated here, and I've got it repeated in the side of my building. So we're almost there because I have said everything I want to say. That's how I usually That's surprising. <laughs> More to you later, Jake. Um, Lighten it up at the top here where these bushes are tried to. And that's just the cad yellow in yeah, the Yeah, now I just picked up a little white. White, yeah. okay. You know, confident brush strokes. Even if you're not feeling that confident, put confident brush strokes down anyway. Well, you can see all that wonderful red popping through. That's got a <coughs> really nice just good things. I can never paint on a white canvas. It's so dull. That got a little thick there. Anyway, I think that's pretty good. Um, I might tweak it out, a, you know, a bit later when I'm sitting at my easel right in front of it and do this or that, but not much at all. Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'll put, this is my signature. Um, I had a, a teacher tell me one time, if you're going, you know, when you have a, a far distant thing like the sea over there, if you're going to take the eye there, you better entertain it. So I'm just going to put some little sailboats out there. <laughs> Is it dark? I can't see from here. I'm trying to paint on an angle, everybody. So for you, for all you people, I'm painting on an angle. So I'm not right in front of my canvas. We're working on it. And, uh, you know, enjoying our um, painting videos. Enjoy sharing it with you. And, and we're growing and we'll get better and better. We're, we're <laughs> going to work on it. So anyway, I think that's about what I'm going to do today, and, and like I said earlier, I might tweak it out a little bit when I get in front of my easel after it's totally dry one more time. I will paint the sides. I'll pick out one dominant color, which is probably the blue, blue kind of a, a blue-gray maybe, a dominant color, and paint the sides. I don't paint the image around the sides because that's how prints are, are wrapped. So. This is an original, so I'm going to paint a solid color around the sides, put a wire on it, and that's it. So we'll be painting um, more paintings and sharing them with you. Um, thanks for liking our station. Please subscribe, like, and all of that stuff. And if you go to my website, Jane Slifka Gallery, this is my plug. 
but we do have classes for sale. We have 10 classes up that are $25 a piece, and it's an hour-long class. And you can buy the class and watch it over and over and paint along with me. Have some friends over, set up the kitchen, have a little paint party with me. So uh, there's all kinds of subject matter there, and we'll be working on more to come. So thank you. It's fun painting with you. We'll see you next time. Bye from the Jane and Jane Productions.